Welcome, everyone, to another edition of To Your Health, a program designed to bring you information on healthy living, featuring those who make healthy living available. I'm your host, Fred Zucker, coming to you from the Parker University campus in Dallas, Texas. Today, our special guest is Staff Sergeant Shiloh Harris, U.S. Army retired. Shiloh, thank you so much for your service and your sacrifice, and we are thrilled that you are with us today here at Parker University. Shiloh, would you tell us a bit about your background, your career, and just sort of give us an overview of of your life and and how things have been for you, because it's a wonderful story. Well, I appreciate you saying that, and I extremely appreciated that you had me on the show. Uh, Dr. Zucker, I know that we've met a few times, and uh, you know, for me to be able to be on your radio show really means a lot to me. So thank you for that opportunity. Uh, you know, right. I, I, I have to say that another true blessing is me being introduced into chiropractic. But, you know, before that, uh, I was in the service. I joined the military after 9-11, 2001, which I know a lot of the listeners probably know exactly what that is. Oh, yeah. And, you know, it was the day our nation was attacked. And uh, it's also the day that we lost nearly 4,000 lives. That's and, right. Uh, it shocked me. It shocked the world. And, you know, here we are today, you know, some years later that, uh, you know, we're still, it seems like, in the, that war on terror. But uh, unfortunately, I was injured in the course of that that war. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I think the, the more unfortunate part is all the lives that have been lost, you know, on, on all sides, not right. just American lives, but the lives of, of everyone that, that's given their life for this, this war. And it's so unfortunate. And, you know, I, I, I love to hunt. I have to tell you this. Mm-hmm. I, I really love to hunt. Uh, but I believe that life is the most precious resource that our planet has. Absolutely. But I, I believe in animal management. I believe in that sort of thing. You know, not to say that that's how I feel about war, uh, no, absolutely not. But, you know, uh, when it comes push to shove, you know, I'll have to absolutely uh, pick up a rifle and, and join the military and serve my country, and that's what I did. That's what you did. And your service was wonderful, and, of course, you sustained these injuries when you were on service active duty. And uh, just how you have recovered from that, from those catastrophic injuries, is an amazing story. Tell us a little bit about how that process went for you. Uh, again, thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, it has. It was definitely a journey. You know, being a burn survivor, it comes with its own territory of recovery and survival. I was injured, uh, you know, pretty severely by a roadside bomb that they estimated at 700 pounds of explosives buried in the road. Yeah. As you can imagine, it literally shredded my home The vehicle was destroyed. Yes, yeah, sir. And it killed three of my service members, yeah. my brothers, my friends that was in the vehicle. What a loss. So honestly, it's a miracle that anybody survived that blast. But uh, let's say that I, uh, I went through all that. You know, started my recovery process here in Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas, and it was a very lengthy recovery. Right. Now, that was 2007. Here we are coming up on my 10-year anniversary, and I'm still in recovery yeah. in many aspects. You know, I had three years aggressive recovery, which means I was in back-to-back surgeries. When I retired out of the military in 2010, I had had approximately 50-something surgeries. 56. 50 surgeries. Yes, sir. And... You know, when I say approximately, it gets to a point where, you know, you're about 20, how, how many is 30, this? and right. you're just like, you quit counting, you right. know? Right. <laughs> so uh, we have a, a, and you know, that was 2010 when I retired out at, at 50-something surgeries. Now, here we are again, like I said, you know, 10-year anniversary coming right. up. I have to say that I'm probably close to 70-something surgeries. It's amazing. Yeah. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a lifetime thing, and there's so many adjustments, you know, as the tissue changes, I have to adapt or potentially have a surgery to help that tissue that, that's not as, uh, uh, how, how do you say it in medical terms? Pliable. Term? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Pliable, mm-hmm. flexible, mm-hmm. elasticity, and breathable. I mean, right. you name it. There's so many so many things that come with uh, the scar right. tissue. Right. Well, you have certainly made a, an incredible career out of recounting your story to people that are inspired, amazed, just overcome I've been, I've been there. I've heard you speak so many times, and it's just such a moving tale, and you tell it so well. Just what, what kind of an impact has that had on you, just reaching out to so many people to tell your story and see the effect it has on those listening to you? I really am humbled and honored to be able to do it. 
but I have to give you a bit of a disclaimer. I didn't go out seeking to be a motivational speaker in the right. very beginning. It just happened. I literally was lost in the hospital one day because of all the medications I was on and the opioids and, and uh, everything that I needed at that time. Right. Uh, but it kept me in a daze, you know. And uh, So I was walking around the hospital, and one day I walked in a door thinking it was my doctor's office, and I was practically on stage. There was an audience of people in front of huh. me, and the guy looked at me and he said, hey, are you a guest speaker? And I kind of joked around, you know, I was like, yeah, sure. Yeah, I didn't know what the heck was going on. And, and huh. then I, 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 he called me on it and was like, okay, well, and he put me up on there and started, you know, I was like, well, I said, I'm sorry, hang on. I said, I, I, I'm joking. I said, I, I'm not your guest speaker. And, uh, You're the accidental guest yeah, speaker. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, he said, well, our guest speaker is about 20 minutes late. Would you mind standing in? And I said, sure. I was like, I've never done it. So what we did is we did a little Q&A. It went perfect. Yeah. And th they kept inviting me back. for, And what it was was an orientation uh -huh. for uh, a staff or cadre or anybody that would maybe be in support of the hospital. Right, right. And uh, it led into other things in, that, in a similar category. Well, one thing led to another, and one speech led to another. And then before long, I was a motivational, motivational speaker. Motivational speaker. Yes, sir. Well, your story is certainly motivational. And you've written a book, too, about your career and about your life. And that's Steel Will. Yes, sir. Which that, is a wonderful book, by the way. Thank Terrific. you. Yes, sir. That kind of, that came with its own challenges. You know, writing the book, it took a couple of years, and it was a roller coaster of emotions. You know, it was a challenge to even decide to write the book because, you know, there were so many personal issues that I wanted to share if I would have wrote a book. Right. But let's say that you get the book, you get it written, and you get it out there. I can't change my mind right. about the details of my life that I've Once shared with the That's world. That's right. That's right. So it was a, it was a tough decision, but... Uh, ultimately, I know it was the right decision because I wanted the book, and this is this is no love. You know, when I wrote that book, I sat down and we started working on it, and I just said, if I can save one life with this book, it's worth the journey. Right. It's absolutely worth the journey. Well, you, I know you've talked about opioid addiction. You you are a spokesperson for the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress, and that message is so important right now because there's so many people out there, wounded warriors in particular. We're, we're fighting the battle every day over again and over again, using these drugs, battling with addiction, trying to fight off the, the demons that are still possessing them. And your message is perfectly on target with those people. Yes, sir. And uh, Okay, so we've talked about my three years aggressive recovery. Now, in that three years, I was on the opioids. And then there, there got to be a point. It, it, like I said, you know, I mean, this was aggressive. So... I was on those medications for so long yeah. and those drugs for so long that it's a natural process to get addicted to them. Absolutely. It's just like drinking soda pop. You can get right. addicted to soda pop. But, you know, I was I was on those medications for a year and a half before I realized how strong that addiction was and that it was degrading my health in other ways. Exactly. So, you know, uh, uh, once I made that, uh, that, that trigger, I realized how addicted I was, I decided I had to make a change. Yeah. And I said, and, and, you know, ironically, yes, I needed them to a certain extent. Right. But my body was so used to, to taking them that I couldn't do without them. Exactly. So once I made that, that, that step to step away from them, I could see the progress in my mental recovery. I could see my progress dealing with my emotional recovery. Right. And it wasn't based on a medicated haze or a doped up haze right. that I had been in. So it was actually, I guess you could say, the minute that I decided to start getting away from the opioids was the minute I started living again. Right, right. <clears throat> what a great story. And that's such a difficult battle to, to get off that kind of addiction. And then you had other crises in your life that came up later. Tell us about those. So good thing you brought that up because that's how I got introduced into chiropractic. Exactly. It seemed like it, it was, there's many things that I've noticed that they seem like tragedies in the beginning, and they probably are. But I think it's a, a person's ability to turn something bad into something right. good. Exactly. So I try to look on the bright side of everything. You know, even when it feels like life kicking me in the gut. So I got blown up. One thing led to another, and I became a motivational speaker. Right. Would I have become a motivational speaker without being blown up? Probably not. But we don't know that. Don't know that. That That's, a, that's something God knows, not right. me. That's right. So the next thing is... I retired out of the military, 
living life, think I have life by the tail, and I get rear-ended by a semi right. on the interstate. Doesn't seem fair. And you know what I'm thinking? Really? Is this those lemons that you keep talking right, about? Right. Where's the lemonade? <laughs> Where's the? Li- Give me some sugar if right. I can make something here, you know? Yep. Uh, okay, I had fought extremely hard to get off the opioids. This was like you know a couple of years after I retired. Doing pretty good, living along. Get rear-ended, back in that pain, back on the opioids. Right. Back on these these drugs that I fought so hard to get off of. Yep. My pain levels were so intense that I was throwing up. Really. And so, yeah, I made I had to make that that leap, and you you know get back on the medications and and on the drug on the drug the the drugs and the dope, yep. and I didn't want to, right? But I I had to because the pain was so bad. And I remember I went to an orthopedic doctor, and and you know, and please believe me, I'm not talking about bad about any medical professionals nope. here because it's a community. Sure, I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't have been for the community right. of healthcare professionals that coming team together and working helping. together. But, you know, I went to this uh, the orthopedic doctor after the car accident, and he's like, you know, he said, Charlie, you're really messed up. I'd be scared for you to go to a chiropractor because I asked. I knew enough about chiropractic care that I thought it might help. Might help. And, yeah. But I had no uh, uh, idea the extent of my injuries. Well, he said, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, potentially surgery. What did I just say? I have I've had like seventy something surgery. Surgery again? Yeah, right. and he's talking about another surgery that may lead into another surgery. Right. And I'm like, uh, no, we're not going to do surgery. So we tried all the other alternatives. All right, nothing really helped. It helped, you know, temporarily. I went to an event by chance. I was at the bottom of the barrel. I was at the bottom right. of my well. I was right. suicidal. I was an alcoholic, yeah. and I was I was on these drugs. These opioids, they was dragging me down, but yeah. I couldn't get away from them because I couldn't get away from the pain. Right. So I go to this event. There's a table set up there where the chiropractor donating his services for the veterans that are in attendance. Hmm. That chiropractor convinced me to work on me, and I said, okay. He worked on me for three days at that event. And I have to say he saved my life. Really? That's... Amazing story. I hear stories like that from our alumni here at Parker all the time. So that was the opening of your connection to chiropractic right there. And you've continued, and now you're a spokesperson for the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress. I didn't give them a choice. (laughs) Well, you're a great spokesperson. You make such a great case for the use of chiropractic, not in the exclusion of anything else, but as part of the treatment plan to help your body heal itself. And that's what chiropractic is all about. And you're here today at Park University to speak to students who are considering a career in chiropractic. What do you think you should say to them, those that are considering going into the healing art profession of chiropractic? Well, I can tell you this. Uh, I'm absolutely proud and honored to be here. And being able to talk at chiropractors on a, on a student level, uh, I think is going to have a huge impact. Uh, mostly because I don't know that some of these chiropractic doctors know that they can save lives. Right. I don't know that they realize that their practice, their their professional field, they have that ability to save lives, not just manipulate bones and joints. And, and, you, and please forgive me because I'm not a doctor. Right. You know, I'm a patient. I'm a consumer. I'm on, the, I'm on that side of it. I'm the guy on the table. Right. Now, for the chiropractors that are out there listening and, and, and for these students, I want them to know that they have the ability to save lives. Right. That doctor... Dr. Novelli, he gave me my life back. Right. Therefore, he saved my life. Right. I was able to get away from all those medications. Right now, I'm on zero medications. That's amazing. Zero medication. Right. That's a success story That's right there in itself. That's a success story in itself. Absolutely. Well, Shiloh, we really appreciate you being here for the program and being here to talk to our students during Parker Power Weekend. Those who are considering chiropractic as a career. Thank you again for your service and your sacrifice, your continuing effort to reach out to people who are in need and using your story to help save their lives, which is what you're doing. Thank you so much for your service and your sacrifice. Please tune in again for more To Your Health. We'd love to see you again back here in this place. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.